I love me some good Twitter drama. Look at this. This is awesome. So after this contrast set paper appeared, and I've done a video on that, um, the author of it tweeted it out with you know, one of the these uh, long Twitter threads with screenshots and all. This seems to be the new marketing tool of academics. And um, as you know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of this paper. I think that the number that comes out of such a contrast set is very either useless or counterproductive. And you can see my video on that. In any case, um, there, there was another researcher, uh, Zachary Lipton, who felt like he needed to uh, jump in here saying before the media blitz and retweet party gets out of control this idea exists has been published and has a name and a clear justification it is called counterfactually augmented data I mean, this is amazing <laughs> look at that and here's the published paper of course and um, if we look at the published paper this is it right here um, of course uh, Zach Lipton is an author on that paper and so let's just just read the abstract I haven't read the paper but let's just read the abstract it um <coughs> so I have it classically I have it here on my nifty um, thing here so we can analyze it so this paper if you read the abstract it does sound similar right um, <coughs> Despite alarm over the reliance of union learning systems, blah, 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 spurious correlations. So it talks about the same problems. Now, what do they say? Um, given the documents and their initial labels, we task humans with revising each document so that it accords with a counterfactual target label, retains internal coherence, and avoids unnecessary changes. Right? So this sounds very similar to what these uh, contrast sets do. So. Uh, the uh, counterfactual target label would be the necess necessity of the contrast set to change the label. Uh, retains internal coherence, which is the in the contrast set this simply given by it supposed to conform to the intent of the data set makers, which uh, the intent probably includes internal coherence. And it avoids unnecessary changes that conforms to the contrast set uh, only searching in the local environment of a test uh, set sample. So you see that the definition of these is, is pretty uh, similar. Then <coughs> we go on and say, they say classifiers trained on original data fail on their counterfactually revised counterparts and vice versa. This experiment was also done by the contrast set paper. Um, and then they say classifiers trained on combined data sets performed remarkably well. Uh, just shy of those specialized in either domain. So immediately we see some differences as well, right? Uh, the main difference I see is they say we task humans and then they train on the um, they train on the counterfactually revised counterparts, which probably means they use some mechanical Turks here when they say humans, because if you want to create a training data set, you need lots of data. So they probably take a data set and run its training data set again through something like Mechanical Turk to get uh, annotations. This is exactly what the people of the um, of the contrast sets claim is wrong with the current pipeline. And they so in, in here we have this this thing counterfactually augmented stuff. So the contrast sets. What they say is we actually need the experts to do this, that this, the, these humans are exactly the wrong people to make the data sets. Um, so it has, the CFA has some elements so correctly the same, namely how they construct these labels, but who construct the labels and for what reason. So here it's experts and for what reason? It's for testing. It's, they say, the experts that make the data set should provide an additional contrast test set. So this is, I mean, if, if this is just my opinion, if this is the same idea, of course it's very similar, but if this counts as the same idea, then 95% of all research counts as the same idea as something that Jürgen Schmidhuber has done in the 1990s, which of course Jürgen Schmidhuber um, will eloquently argue <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> 
<laughs> he invented GANs. Um, basically the same thing. So um, yeah, so, so if this is, it, it's not the same. Like I have to say this, it's very close, but it's not the same. And as I understand, they even cited the other ones. Uh, so then the, the bickering <laughs> starts, and this is funny. I'm like, this this is just funny to me. So uh, Zach Lipton jumps here, it says, this has been published, has a name and a clearer justification. Uh, it's called Counterfactual Documented Data. Here is the published paper. We just looked at this, right? And then Matt Gardner answers. And he says, um, Zach and Divyanesh's work is, sorry, and Divya, Divyanesh's work is excellent. I recommend you all go look at it. Our work provides a different concurrent take on similar issues, right? And I think here someone comments that... Um, so he says, it is in the related work section, although mischaracterized and misattributed as contemporary work. So position is really that it is kind of a s stolen idea. Um, and they were apparently in contact with each other during that. So this Matt Gardner here says what the differences are. He says, we take a geometrical view. Uh, we demonstrate the solution of a wider variety. I mean, for all intents and purposes, if you go <laughs> through any of the research, go to computer vision, go to NLP, you'll find like the sa exact, I have like, I have, I review two papers each year that want to r produce data that better defines the decision boundary like these people here. I mean, this is, <laughs> this I ideas just get rehashed over and over uh, in a slightly different form. Um, th um, these two are particularly close, but and then, yeah, they pick her. our paper was finished two months after theirs. Um, and then they say, we started the project well before and so on. <laughs> Why do we feel defensive? <laughs> and then he answers again with, um, this is absolutely false. Our paper was drafted in July. Your paper was finished the night before the ACL deadline. This is not two months ago, but a half a year. It has nothing to do. He says, why do you presume <laughs> to know when we started? Drop the nonsense. We did this work in May 2019. Present the public results in July. Post it in September. Drop the posturing. So much of what you're doing here is the very cancer in the system. I mean, I, 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 I agree just, you know, slightly refining ideas that previously were there is a very bad problem in academia. So this is actually correct to point out, but I, I don't think that this particular instance is particularly bad. And then he says, I'm afraid you're simply mistaken. I have a history of publishing similar. So I have I've something, like the last thing I'm gonna say, I just invite you to read this, it's beautiful. Um, but the last thing to say here, if, <coughs> if this counterfactually augmented data if this is in fact the first instance of this general idea to produce counterfactually augmented data that that uh, that does actually fulfill these criteria, I would be extremely surprised because this has nothing to do with deep learning, right? And the real novelty in our field is mostly deep learning. So I'm pretty sure someone must have thought of something like this when everyone was just doing grammars and manual features and things like this. Um, so I'm, I would be extremely surprised if this hasn't been there in one form or another and why the authors of that shouldn't make exactly the same argument. That being said, it is fairly close. Like the, the fun part here is that it, it is actually a fairly similar idea except uh, the, so the, the, the idea itself is fairly similar but here the focus is on uh, different things and it's also on different data sets and I, I believe, yeah, as I said, 95% of research falls into exactly this category. So much fun, check it out. Um, yeah, bye-bye. <laughs>